Because you were here a couple weeks ago and you were telling us that, like, you tell us this was going to happen. But the name that you were talking about was actually Sam Howell. But come Senior Bowl week, we're a couple practices in and everyone's goozing and oozing all over my man uh, Malik Willis down there. They say his arms look nice. He looks faster than expected. Like, and I'm not going to lie, that picture looks kind of nice. I, I'm, I'm falling for it at this point. Scott, what's going on, man? Is, is, is this kid the truth? Well, or like, it always happens. It, yeah. It happens. It's an every year thing. And, and it, you know, so with the quarterbacks, you have to consider – uh, level of level of competition, but you, but it's such a complimentary position that you know when you look at Malik Willis at Liberty, Ooh. there's not a lot around him there. So you know, um, but just from raw skills and raw tools, what the things that he can do is ridiculous. So it doesn't surprise me that a quarterback or multiple quarterbacks emerge from this group and are going to be considered um, much higher than anybody thought going in. Um, I will tell you. I thought it was going to be Sam Howell. I really did, and I, and I yeah. tweeted that and I wrote that a little bit. Um, it sounds like he's a bit of a um, kind of a shrinking violet type personality where he's not real outspoken and he's quiet. And I, I don't want to say socially awkward, but but there's an element of that with him where where it's just not the same as it, as it is with Malik Willis, who is a total alpha. And uh, you know, I'll just just to put it. In terms of where where I would totally get it is is uh, media media people are going to love talking to Malik Willis, where Sam Howell is going to be one of those guys that you really got to you really got to extract things out of him, and that's the difference between those guys right now. And you know, I mean, at the combine you can hide, uh, players can hide things for a couple of days, but it's a very different thing being with with a person for a week and seeing them on the bus, interact with other players, and seeing them in the hotel and seeing them eat and all those things. Uh, it sounds like Willis is doing everything I thought Howell would do and the stuff on the field. I mean, he's not really running with the football at all during practice, and he's still bl- he's kind of blowing all the other quarterbacks away. So it doesn't surprise me. It really doesn't. The question then becomes, and this is a long – it's going to be a long uh, conversation. We have we have plenty of time for this, is where does he go? And I would, I'll just tell you, if I could get anybody to look at me the way Mike Tomlin is looking at Malik Willis, it would be good for me. Um, and that's what I tell you. So I think the floor for Malik Willis is probably the Steelers in round one. Uh, do the Lions consider taking him at two? I think they should. I know wow. that's going to be it's going to cause some controversy. It's going to oh, piss some people off. But listen, I mean, would you take Josh Allen one right now? If you, no, no, no. no I, now? My yeah. whole my I'm whole I'm point, you. Scott, it, it, to, to elaborate on on that and uh we're talking to uh stop writer football guys uh scott bishop follow him at bishop underscore scott is the fact because now we're dealing with you look at the you look at where the Bengals are you look at how they got their quarterback up front and you look at because they were able to get chased and here's the thing that that neil rule who's not here because he's out sipping cocktails on the island is the fact that the you get that quarterback is if he's the guy cap space, in man. a few years cap space, <laughs> um, you know because the, the big thing with Cincinnati and, and Chase and uh, Burrow is that there's 17 million on the cap, right? So so yeah. I guess it's talent, it's attitude, it's everything that goes into it, but even a lot of it is it can this guy be the guy the gapper to to learn behind is it that potential to everything it is and for you to say that they should think about it and you said that pretty offhandedly i mean in a perfect world pick two goes to it's either hutchinson or thibodeau and then then you use assets that you have in this draft and futures if you love malik willis you you make a trade come from from you know, pick thirty-four and a future third, second, whatever it costs, to get up to say pick fifteen, and you take them. And you know, I mean, there's no right way to do this. There's no guarantees as to uh, whether a quarterback's going to work. But I think looking around the NFL, it, you really you need a mobile guy. You need you need a player who can make plays in a variety of ways and can do and can do things <laughs> outside the conventions of a normal offense. So when things break down, we can see players like. Uh, you know, just your, your run-of-the-mill quarterbacks. When things break down for Jared Goff, the play's sort of over. When plays break down for other quarterbacks, they can make plays with their feet, or they can throw on the run. They can do other. They can do other things. And those are the teams where I mean, look, just look at Mahomes. 
what happens to with that offense when Mahomes when he gets outside the pocket? It's electric, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Josh Allen, same thing. Just the same heard. stuff can be said for Malik. Do you tell me that Malik Willis is that good or should be because he's got these all intangibles of this new age quarterback? You brought up a great point about a guy named Mike Tomlin. And a guy about this team called the Steelers and about this big Ben Roethlisberger that he gone and his Mason Rudolph, he gone, right? They need a quarterback. Where is Pittsburgh picking? 20. Pittsburgh's picking 20. So you're not – to get this straight, right, the thought of taking him at two, but realistically that the move that has to be made has to beat the Steelers to the party, you would say, yeah, right now. I'm not right? – I am not saying to draft him like I'm not even saying to th- that they should draft him at two. I'm saying that Lions fans need to prepare themselves for the idea that coming out of the Senior Bowl, it's going to be discussed. It's it, he, they are going to love him. There it they, is. I mean, it's you know they are the personality, the uh, charisma, the uh, the arm strength, the raw talent, the ability to run. I mean, I'm just telling you, if you if you're betting, if you're a degenerate and you're betting on the senior bowl, <laughs> I would bet well, on to win the uh, MVP. He's going to do some stuff, uh, and 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 you know, practices aren't set up for him to to you know escape the pocket and run. So he's not even showing that side of his game right now. He's not. Mm-hmm. He's doing all this stuff, throwing the football, which is supposed to be where he was at his weakest. Now I'm not saying he doesn't have. He, he needs time. I mean, he's he would come here and sit a year. It's not like one of those things where he's going to come and play. No, but that's the beauty. Right? That's the beauty. You have have a situation where you can do that, and you're right. They need to jump in front of Pittsburgh. You know, to me, I don't really care what it would cost to go up and get him. You need to take swings at the – I mean, you need it. I almost swore. You need to really take some swings there. (laughs) We got to add a button. It is so important. I mean, it is so important. And what they have – I mean, I like Jared Goff as a person. I just don't know that he's – I don't know that he's getting them over the top when you look around the NFL and you see well, the, the cap space, man. who are getting over. Yeah. I mean, you need you need more than what they currently have, and he, and his skill set's ridiculous. Well, so his skill – Can, can I – Can it, the emergence of, like, a Jermaine Johnson from SFU, like you spoke on earlier, which, by the way, I was trying to find this video for you, d Yeah, yeah. Well, because well, the, well, the thing they're talking about us taking number two is the edge rusher, right? But we have this kid, Jermaine Johnson, who, like, I wanted to find this video for you specifically on Twitter. Uh, Deuce Daly had him, after practice, do a one-on-one drill with one of the top tackles. And you, I'm sure you saw this guy. He demolished him. Yeah. And I think well, with the birds. So they did a little best of three thing, and he, he, he obliterated him on one. He got beat on another, and then it was kind of like a tie type of thing. But – Okay. But, you know, to be honest, in those in those scenarios, it's that this it is set up for for defensive players to win those one on one drills. Oh yeah, it just is. But so so to me, I'm not looking at I'm not necessarily looking at whether they win or lose. It's the way they move, and he moves he moves different than all the other defensive ends at his size. He's a big player. He I wanted just, to ask. He moves. Uh, yeah. I want to ask with him though his name coming into conversations like does that make the likelihood of a, of a Malik Willis because you have a Jermaine Johnson to rely on later with like thirty four or thirty two like whoever falls like I mean, and what are the it, it, and what are the downfalls of Malik you know, it, as well? He's he's raw. I mean, you know, there. Are, I think uh, it could be said that he probably had uh, he's had the best like the five best throws of the week and he might have had the five worst throws of the week but mm. it's the it's those this i mean remember we got a you know josh allen i remember standing in the, in the end zone and watching him sail footballs over my head uh at the senior bowl thinking i don't i can't believe this guy's at the senior bowl this is ridiculous but you know he his arm strength was off the charts and, and he could run and he's a huge man you know i mean th- there's some of that stuff with malik willis he's he's you know, six foot, two hundred twenty pounds. He's built like a big running back. He's going to run like a big running back, and he's got a cannon. And there's there are going to be things that you can do with him. Now, obviously, you'd have to tailor an offense for him for the things that he does well. But I do think that you know, looking at some of the mistakes that were made uh, historically with some of these quarterbacks, who like Josh Allen at Wyoming, we we dis we sort of dismissed him, but didn't consider what was around him, and he didn't have much around him. Now, Malik Willis at Liberty, there's nothing around him that's NFL level. There just isn't. 
So I think he's surprised even the Lions coaching staff this week at his ability to progress through his reads, you know, quickly and get to different places with the ball. So the question is, is what's his upside as a player? And I think his upside's is his upside is significant and it's worth it's worth this you know it's worth the swing it just is so but the question then becomes you know at what point in time do you consider taking that swing and clearly i would i would hope it's not at two if it's at two you know um they fell in love with them they did it happens every year it does I was reading some reports even Mark Brunel was was excited because they're teaching him like new things like you know to try out there because obviously at Liberty he's kind of limited with his team and whatnot and he's executing them. They're saying Mark Brunel was like yep. jumping up and down basically well, off of like swing it routes. Sounds like that's uh, you know what what Scott's implying here.